Uh, good evening, everybody. This is the last session of the day. It's been a long day, so I'll try to run through it. First of all, I'd like to thank uh, PCSI, Dr. Amitabh, and the whole team for this opportunity. This is a. Uh, I was asked to talk on Simitar syndrome. We've had a few cases. I just thought I'll share some of my experience. It's uh, the, the ten minutes. Isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Simitar syndrome, not so uncommon entity. The basically characterized pulmonary hypoplasia. So you have dextroposition. The report has dextrocardia. You have a small right side pulmonary artery. Right pulmonary veins drain to the to a vein called scimitar vein, which drains to IVC. The name comes from something called scimitar. Is a, a Turkish word. Turk, the Turkish people have small sword. That's called scimitar, which is why this nomenclature came about. That's the only constant feature. The other variable features include the presence of size of an ASD, other shunts like a VASD or, or a PDA. Uh, anomalies, systemic vein, other anomalies are also there. But what we have seen is there's always a presence of collaterals that help the baby to survive and also cause problems later on, which would need to be addressed. So, like, see, this is how you see an X ray. You see this vein here. If, you, if you've got a good X ray, you see this vein here. It's called a scimitar vein. The right pulmonary veins are going to the IVC. There's an MRI image of the same, which shows the pulmonary veins coming here. So, this is how it's called as. Like this is what a Turkish sword called a scimitar is like a small dagger. So this is how the name can then because the right lung is hypoplastic, the, the heart gets shifted to the right side of the extra position. And then you have right pulmonary artery also small. Clinical present is very spectrum of manifestation, varied ages, right from neonates to adults. A very rarely may antenatal directed. We've had two cases where report as dextrocardia on uh, antenatal echo and finally turned out with scimitar postnatally. Uh, rarely, some of them have breathless at birth because there's severe pH. Failure to thrive is a common complaint. Recurrent LRT are also there. Some of them may be asymptomatic, so may come to attention incidentally, as I'll show you one case. So the treatment is basically surgical if the child is very symptomatic or medical follow up if the child is okay. Where there's a small role of interventional cardiology in the palliation in the treatment of this. It's always surgical, but if the patient is okay, you can actually afford to wait for some time. Uh, I, this is the X-ray like the, you, 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 the X-ray you see, you'll see, and you'll see this vein. This, and if you are good enough, you'll find a, a scimitar vein. Uh, it's a cytosolitary with a dextrocardial heart, small left lung. So you'll get an idea of a scimitar vein. Uh, echo, uh, when they come for echo, a lot of them they get missed out. The echo may, they may just show a small size, uh, small size left atrium, though not as small as TAPC. And a large right atrium, right ventricle, with some somewhat mesocardia. So unless you have high index of suspicion, you may not actually pick it up. Also, it happens. And if you can see, this is a this is a modified subcost, a short XRP of a child with a this is a right pulmonary artery, which is pretty small in size. So if you have that image of dextrocardia, a small right pulmonary, or if you have this, uh, if, if there is a red heading, you should ask for a diagnosis, as it can actually get missed out. We've had some cases we missed out. And if you this is the IVC, you can see the scimitar vein going to the IVC. If you're very careful, you'll see it, you may miss, miss that out also. And especially in neonates, it may be missed out. It's the same thing with the vein. Uh, if, so if, you, if you don't uh, focus very well, you might actually miss out the vein coming to the IBC RA junction. So you have to be very careful. And this one case who had LV dysfunction for, for, came to us for LV dysfunction, then turned out we have everything. These are some of the similarities, the mysteries of symptoms that happens. Radiological imaging is always the gold standard. You've got to do a CT scan, MRI will show the things in the right perspective. This is a, this is a uh, recreated image. It's a, it's a very good symptom when they can see, which gives the surgeon quite an idea of what to do. I just, uh, because we are back on run, just, just angiogram. You do a cat, you, you see the heart is on the right side. It's a, a very short, very small right lung hypoplastic. So basically, dextrocardiac cat. And this is what you have to do. Always try to look at the pulmonary arteries, uh, look at the main pulmonary artery right and left. The, the, this child had an extreme dextrocardia, very small lung, the whole heart was hit to right. But you can see the second case, the, it was a mesocardia. RPA was good size, LPA was good size. Nothing really to suggest a right lung hypo, uh, a small RPA. The first case, yes. And uh, we always try to do, try to see the low, look at the pulmonary RPA anatomy. How is the uh, how is the arborization, and how see the the one image. The first image shows a small size left RPA, but the the second one goes, shows a good size RPA. There's no hypoplasia. 
nothing of that sort. And from an international point of view, we try to look at the co co uh, collaterals. So you can see the first one, this is a covalent collateral. That's not so big. And this one had a huge collateral, huge. And if you can see the, the venous drain is also coming down here. And uh, so we got to look at this, outline this, and this is another larger collateral that's, that's a bit tortuous. So you have to see this when you, when you plan out treatment before you go ahead with surgery, before you go ahead with anything else. I'll, I'll just share some of the cases we had. Uh, the first was, she's an eight-year-old girl, actually. And really, she was supposed to have dextrocardia on the TIFA scan. And then she was delivered in Bangalore, and they, they, there's a doubt about right lung. So she had a lot of breathlessness, decision at birth. Did a CT scan, showed a scimitar, small size uh, right pulmonary artery, and uh, the veins going to the uh, IVC. Uh, she was medically managed, actually uh, managed to stabilize, nothing was done. And then she came to us later at two years of age. Uh, we saw scimitar, but there was some pH, and there appeared to be some collateral also. So she was taken up for a, 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 a cap. You can see, if you can, entering the, it's a, the RARV are quite uh, tortuous, it's very difficult to enter the main pulmonary artery. You can see the right atrium, you can see the right, you can see a small right, uh, dilated right atrium, you can see an MPA. You can't see the RPA very well. Getting into the main pulmonary artery was quite difficult. But you manage to, if you can see the LPS is quite large, LPS is quite large, RPS is quite small. Uh, so we actually did, we, we entered the RPA to take an RPA shoot. If you can understand the RPA is quite tortuous, getting into RPA will be quite difficult. So sometimes we use the stiff end of, the, of a coronary wire, of a regular wire, and that's how you manipulate the wire into the, the catheter into, into RPA. When you withdraw the wire, it somehow goes inside. So that sometimes, sometimes takes some manipulation. That's how it went in there. We managed to take an RPA shoot. We showed uh, uh, quite a good uh, size, slightly smaller size RPA, but okay. And then, uh, then we did a shoot. You can see the descent here took up shows a huge collateral actually supplying the left lower lobe, right lobe, and the good venous return also. So when you plan to do a device closure, you've got to see that there's dual supply, otherwise you might cause a major pulmonary infarction. So we took a simultaneous shoot of the collateral and also from the RPA. So you could see this, this area had a dual blood supply. So it was quite safe. So we went ahead and we put a, this was 8 mm vascular plug actually. You can see the, this is the vascular plug being extruded out. And the vascular plug will take time to thrombus. So it took some time, but ultimately it was done. You can see the second shoot, the flow has considerably reduced. And we finally managed to release the device. I'll just run through this. She underwent MAPCA device closure, PA pressure scanned on significantly, no further symptoms, so she's not been operated also, goes to school doing very well, eight-year-old child doing very well, actually. And there are some marital issues with parents, so they actually neglected, but she's doing very well. This is another child who was 10 months of age, diagnosed scimitar at two months of age, very apprehensive parents. So he had scimitar, severe pulmonary, also had a VSD on, it could look like this, there's a PA left severe pulmonary vein going to the uh, vertical vein also. So he had a VSD, had pH, had MAPCAS also. So it was a bit of complex, a very small child. Weight was hardly four kilos. So you can, this is the echo that shows a small sized LA, but not so small, not so tiny as a TAPC. And the IVC shoot, uh, IVC echo, you can see the scimitar vein that's coming up. Uh, if you can see well, this subcostal that shows a VSD look, was only about three, four mm, but actually was much more and had severe pH also. So he had, and then this is it. So this is a, is a huge map, huge collateral for a four kilo child was uh, quite significant. And if you can see that, see the left pump, left superior by LSPV going to the vertical vein. So you have all the right veins going to the IVC, LSPV going to the SVC. So you had only one vein, left inferior pulmonary going to the, going to the uh, LA. So all three veins are going to the right side, basically almost like a TAPC. And then if you can see this, is the LV, LV angio, which showed a moderate size VAZ. And this, uh, this child had, the weight was very less, so we had to put multiple coils. Went off very well, but had, could put three or four coils. And followed by ECR here, a pulmonary vein rerouting, at a VSD closure and I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah. and a VSD now on follow up still has some pulmonary, but doing quite well. Another is a 24 year old adult had a lovely ASD, was scheduled for an ASD device closure, 
went for a tea whether they couldn't find out the right pulmonary veins. So then did a cath it turned out to be a uh, scimitar, what operated, no symptoms like it all. There's another child who had a six month old child, recurrent reality and failure to thrive. So came to us as de dextrocardia, severe pH, had a large, large map car. If you can see the, see the main pulmonary is quite good, right and left are quite okay, not too bad. RPSI is okay, not too bad. And this was the collateral that you saw. So we were very gung-ho about, went off very well. We put a wire, just managed to cannulate. But this was just a diagnostic angio actually. And finally, we saw this tiny PD as well, which was not seen earlier. Unfortunately, this child had post had vascular issues, had a femoral pseudoanism, right femoral artery. So this child had some post op issue, had a post op was not doing very well. So it's not yet done. It's finally planned for a map card device closure, followed by aneurysm repair and scimitar repair in the same setting. It was quite yeah, to keep these things in mind, vascular issues. <coughs> this is a child who was followed for occasional LRTA, some mesocardia, echo showed some turbulence, IVC off late, and with some LV dysfunction. So you want underwent a cat and to my to our sub this is this is the, the dextrose heart, good size RPLP. Good size RP, not so bad. And left pulmonary also good. But to our surprise, if you can see this, see the large MAPCA with a good venous return here. And this, the selective cannulation was quite big size. But PA pressures were normal, not, not hardly. Any. But if you can see this IVC, left ELAC vein shoot, so the duplication of IVC. See this the IVC coming up here. And there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's another IVC going, going as azagus to the SVC. So you can see the cath goes, the vein, the catheter going up from the iliac vein, across the right IVC to left IVC, as I guess when and entering the right uh, SVCR. So it's quite a complex case, quite quite a funny, but this is the cath goes just to show. We went from the IVC to the RA to SVC to as I guess and just came back just to show that. But he's asymptomatic, not much of PA pressure, so we just kept him on follow. We had one case last year, 28 day old neonate. Uh, very, uh, very inter very nice parent, but obstructed scimitar simit vein was obstructed at the IVC junction. And severe pH was doing very badly, was an HFO had sepsis. The plan was to do surgery, but surgery was thought very risky. So we thought we actually stand the obstruction and then take up for surgery. But unfortunately, the child didn't make it. We actually lost the chair. So just to summarize, scimitar is a syndrome with a variety of manifestations, right from neonates to adults. Maybe asymptomatic, may have severe pH also. And treatment is tailored individually by the patient's needs, patient demand, and the findings also. Intervention have limited on stabilization, but actually help in service to some extent. Thank you. Sorry if I.